Hi, ArtfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Orion here on Tuesday morning, April 4th. We've been talking at length about severe weather outbreak possibility for uh, later today, tonight, into the day on Wednesday. Indeed, it looks like that is unfolded. We'll kind of focus in on a, a couple of the main factors involved. Upper level jet streak combined with a low level jet streak will really tend to destabilize the atmosphere and produce what we call wind shear, a change of wind speed and direction with altitude and that can lead to kind of a spin in the atmosphere or rotation in the atmosphere which can end up producing tornadic activity so we'll talk about the uh, multiple uh, jet streaks in the atmosphere uh, during this video discussion yesterday we we saw a moderate risk area up across the uh, northern mississippi valley as issued by NOAA's storm prediction center for the possibility of uh, severe weather. We talked, uh, we mentioned that that could actually increase. Sometimes these uh, uh, tend to increase in risk factor as you get closer and closer to the event time. Indeed, Storm Prediction Center has now added a second moderate uh, risk area down across the central Mississippi Valley region. So this is the area of concern from late today through the overnight hours into the day on Wednesday. And then beyond that, the threat will shift into the Ohio Valley. There's no question there uh, is the potential for some severe weather uh, during the day on Wednesday into Wednesday night across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley. And even beyond that, this same frontal system will then slide into the uh, eastern U.S. And along the east coast late in the day on Thursday into Thursday evening, there absolutely can be some strong to severe thunderstorms. Don't be surprised if this uh, risk factor increases in intensity again as we get closer and closer to the event so we have a uh, really a two or three day uh, uh, severe weather event here starting later today into tonight across the Mississippi Valley region shifting to the Midwest Ohio Valley on Wednesday and then all the way to the eastern seaboard by later Thursday into Thursday night well before we focus in on those ingredients for the severe weather uh, uh, potential here. Uh, uh, don't want to dismiss accumulating snow. It looks like there'll be a significant accumulating snow over the next 48 to 72 hours or so in the cold sector of this particular storm system. It really extends from the Rocky Mountain states all the way into the northern plains and ultimately makes makes its way into the northern part of New England. But this entire area from the Rocky Mountain states across the Dakotas into the northern half of Minnesota could receive 6 to 12 inches of snow. And in Wyoming, there may be some spots that end up with 1 to 2 feet of snow from this storm system. So at least one more round here of some substantial snow up across the Rocky Mountain states, the northern plains, all the way into the upper Midwest, and ultimately decent snowfall for the northern part of New England. All of this is by the time we get to Friday morning. This is the total snowfall map from last night's operational run of the GFS for the 72-hour period ending on Friday morning. Well, let's talk about a couple of jet streaks here. First of all, we're looking at the lower part of the atmosphere using the operational run of the GFS from 0Z last night, uh, 850 millibars. That's about uh, four or 5,000 feet above the ground level. And uh, anytime there's a low-level jet combined with an upper-level jet, that uh, could present some problems because you typically have a change in wind speed and direction with altitude, and that can lead to some rotation in the atmosphere. In other words, supercells, uh, strong, strong thunderstorms can have some kind of rotation leading to potential of tornadic activity. And here we begin the day on Tuesday morning with... Uh, uh, Strong winds here at the lower levels of the atmosphere. What we're looking at are the 850 millibar winds as we begin the day here on Tuesday morning. Now let's push forward through the day here and watch what happens to this 850 millibar, this low level jet. It intensifies. This is the forecast map from the Zero Z GFS for this evening. And that low level jet is really intensifying. And also take note here of the directions really from like a south to southwest uh, direction here in the lower levels of the atmosphere by the time we get to uh, later on today into the uh, nighttime hours we'll go a, a little bit farther in time right here and uh, 
see how this evolves. And here we have an intense low-level jet in the overnight hours. This is the forecast map for around 2 in the morning Eastern time. Strong low-level jet, and that's a key factor here in leading to rotation in the atmosphere and the possibility of tornadoes. And it, it tends to die down a little bit in the late night hours, but this is the forecast map for early tomorrow. And that severe weather shift, uh, severe weather risk will shift from the Mississippi Valley into the Midwest and Ohio Valley during the day on Wednesday. Well, now let's take a look at the upper part of the atmosphere. We're looking here specifically at uh, uh, two, uh, 250 millibars, way up in the upper part of the atmosphere. Again, beginning the day here with some very strong winds at upper level jet streak. Just a moment ago, we were looking at the low level jet streak. And watch what happens to this as we get into the late part of today and into early tonight. Intensification here in the upper levels of uh, the atmosphere. So again, we have uh, two jet streaks here, one of the lower levels, one of the upper levels, and that leads to rotation in the atmosphere, leads to upward motion in the atmosphere, and initially that will be centered over the Mississippi Valley region, leading to the severe weather outbreak uh, later on tonight into the uh, late night hours, and then on the day Wednesday. We are now Wednesday morning, and that upper level jet streak uh, continues to look very, very impressive by the time it gets to late in the day on Wednesday, and again, that severe weather sh will shift into the Ohio Valley during the day on Wednesday into Wednesday night, and certainly the upper level jet streak will continue to play a role. Well, let's now take a look at the operational uh, run of the GFS in terms of surface forecast maps. Very nice day sh uh, shaping up in the uh, mid-Atlantic region, high temperatures likely in the 70s, D.C., Philadelphia, even New York City with plenty of sunshine, but look out here in the, the Rocky Mountain states. Plenty cold enough for accumulating snow. Again, we saw uh, uh, the region from the, the uh, central and northern Rockies all the way across the Dakotas into Minnesota. Significant snowfall in the cold sector of this storm system. Places in uh, Wyoming, for example, could get one to two feet of snow over the next 24 hours or so. Now, let's move forward here. Uh, we've also talked about the uh, importance of uh, a low-level flow of air coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, and that is certainly going to intensify during the day with that low-level jet. This is the forecast map for this evening. So you have a cold frontal system in the middle of the nation. You have cold, dry air charging to the south and east. At the same time, you have warm and humid air flooding the Mississippi Valley region into the Ohio Valley. That uh, is setting up that, uh, what we mentioned before numerous times, a clash zone, a battle zone right in this part of the nation. And uh, as we get into the late evening hours, into the overnight hours, some of this activity can involve some tornadic activity. It looks like there will be uh, some rotation in the atmosphere with those multiple jet streaks in the atmosphere. And this is the forecast map by uh, early tomorrow morning, that cold frontal system right in this region right now. And the shift, uh, the uh, severe weather risk will shift into the Ohio Valley uh, during the day on Wednesday. Let's go into the uh, latter part of tomorrow into tomorrow evening. And here's that cold frontal system at this particular time. And again, a severe weather uh, uh, risk in the Ohio Valley, maybe the western part even of the Mid-Atlantic region later on tomorrow night. Uh, and then going into the day on Thursday, we'll see this cold frontal system shift to the eastern seaboard. This is the Thursday morning forecast map. And there certainly can be some strong to severe thunderstorms right along the east coast. Uh, maybe I-95 in points to the east uh, like with the last event, may, uh, that area uh, from I-95 to the coast may be uh, primed for some strong to severe thunderstorm activity. We're talking later Thursday afternoon into the evening hours. And then that front finally works its way off the coast by the time we get to Friday. Canadian high pressure will dominate the scene on Friday with chilly air mass over the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and chilly air over the northeastern U.S. as well. It looks like this high-pressure system will stay in control 
uh, during the upcoming weekend. This is the Saturday morning forecast map. It's a chilly air mass, no doubt about it, for uh, Friday, Saturday, and even into the day on Sunday across the northeastern part of the nation. The storm system will try to get organized over the southeastern part of the nation. It probably stays down there, does not impact the mid-Atlantic region. We go all the way out to Sunday morning, Easter uh, Sunday here. That uh, moisture in the southeast pushes off the coast. High pressure remains in control, and it uh, may turn out to be quite a nice day on Sunday, again, we're talking Easter Sunday in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, Boston with high pressure in control, likely plenty of sunshine. We'll go a little farther ahead in time into the early part of next week, and it really looks like there could be a surge of warmth. And we can see it's starting to set up here. This is a week from right now, and we have the high pressure shifting into the southeastern states. And there'll be a very broad flow developing on the back side of that high with increasingly warm air reaching all the way up into the northern plains and the Great Lakes. And definitely looking like a warm week, set a warmer week than we've been accustomed to for uh, next week. Certainly setting up by later next week across the central and eastern states. That's another reason why this severe weather outbreak over the next couple of days could be the last in a while because the warm air will kind of surge into the uh, all the way up to the northern U.S. Uh, from the northern plains uh, to the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states later next week. But in the meantime, we have a severe weather outbreak to deal with later today, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, even into the day on Thursday. And uh, this whole area will focus in on the Mississippi Valley region over the next 12 to 24 hours. Then the uh, Midwest, Ohio Valley, later tomorrow into tomorrow night, and then all the way to the eastern seaboard during the day on Thursday. That's it for now. For ArcfieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.